All right, this video is going to go over how to graph circles, limassons, or roses. Um, they can be pretty tricky to draw, and they can be pretty tricky to explain, so I'll do the best I can. Uh, the first thing I want to start with is pay attention to each equation and be able to tell the difference between the three. So, like, circles only have one number, and that's going to be the diameter. Limassons have two numbers with a plus or a minus in the middle. And roses have two numbers, but there's no plus or minus. So you definitely need to know like what you're drawing before you actually try to draw it. And you're also going to want to know this right here. This right here, what I'm circling, is basically telling you where to put the bulk of your graph. I'll explain what I mean by that. But let's look at this first one. Circles are super easy. Basically, first of all, um, you pay attention to if it's a positive or negative cosine or sine. So like this is a positive cosine. The bulk of the graph is going to be to the right of the pole. So like I would draw a circle here. And then all you need to know is that this number right here is your diameter. So this would be eight out like that. So like look at this next one. It's a negative cosine function. So I would instantly draw a circle. That wasn't a very good one, but that's okay. Um, on the, to the left of the pole here. And then in terms of this being three, you could call it three or negative three. Uh, basically you're talking about like a distance. So I think the general way to do it is to call it positive three, but I might be wrong on that. Some people might call it negative three. So yeah, I'm going with the positive three. I think you'd probably be all right if you put it as negative three though. Okay, let's look at this next one. It's a sine function and it's a positive sine function. So your circle is gonna go up here and it is just a diameter of two. And then this last one is a negative sine function. So your circle would go here and we'll call it, again, I'm gonna call it positive three because it's a distance, but some people might put negative three. I'm not 100% sure on that. That's okay. Let's keep moving. Now we get to limassons. Limassons are weird, all right? So basically there's two types. Uh, the first type is like a circle inside of a circle. The second type is like a circle with part pushed out away from the pole. I'll show you both and how to know what to do. So you need to, again, know this right here, where to position the bulk of your graph. And then you need to know this right here, A plus B far, A minus B close. So here's what I mean by this, all right? I have a positive cosine function here. So the bulk of my graph is gonna go here, right? Now, in this scenario, A plus B is three. That's going to be my far point, three. And A minus B is negative one. That means my close point is going to be one inside from the pole. I know that's kind of tricky. And then also this right here, this tells you how high and low you go. So I'm going to go one up, one down like this. Then I basically just connect all the dots. So I have a little circle here and a bigger circle like this. Now, I kind of drew that wrong. You're kind of supposed to go out, then hit it, then come back like that. It's like a heart shape almost. All right. So the first number tells you the high low, these two points. And then when you add them together, that's your far point. And when you subtract them, that's your close point. Now I know this right here probably did not make much sense to you. That's okay. When you see these next two examples, it will. So like this next one, it's another positive cosine function. So the bulk of my graph is gonna go on the right side. A plus B is four. So it's gonna be four out. A minus B is zero. That means it's gonna use the pole. 
and then um in terms of the high low that would be your first number the two and so now i'd be ready to draw this and i have to this one's not going to have an inner loop it's just going to be like a heart shape like this so the main takeaway so far is when a minus b is less than one that's when you get this inner loop when a minus b is zero that's when there's no inner loop and it uses the pole well what about if you do this and you're like okay well a plus b is five that's my far point and a minus b is positive one well now it's still a positive cosine function. So the majority of my graph is going to be on the right and the furthest out it's going to be is five. And this rule still applies, the up, down, three. Okay. But now, since A minus B was a positive one instead of a negative or a zero, it gets pushed one out away from the pole like this. And so when you go to connect these dots, it just looks like a heart like this. Uh, but there is no inner circle or anything. It's only when A minus B is less than one that you have that inner circle. So now let's look at a couple more. Look at this next one. One plus two sine. Okay. Well, it's a positive sine function, meaning the majority of my graph is going to be up here. A plus B is three. So it's going to be three out at its max. A minus B is negative one. That means there's going to be an inner circle one in. Then you're still going to be one out either direction. Well, since this is sine, it's going to be one this way and one this way, like that. And so basically you start at the pole. And I like when I know I have an inner loop, I just draw a quick inner loop like this. And then I'll worry about actually making the heart shape like that. Okay, let's look at this next one. A plus B is four. A minus B is zero. And so I have a negative sine function. So the bulk of the graph is gonna be down here. The furthest it's gonna be out is four. And the the, there is no inner loop or anything because A and B were the same. So it uses the pole and it's going to be two out either direction. And so now I just basically draw a heart shape. Okay. And then this last one. This last one's a negative cosine function. So the majority of my graph is going to be here. A plus B is 13. So that means it's going to be 13 out. A minus B is negative 3. So it's going to have a loop 3 in. And then it's 5 the either directions. Okay, now I know this is going to be an inner circle one. So I draw my little inner circle. And then I just draw the heart shape with the other ones like that. I know those are super weird. They're super confusing. Again, the main takeaway, when your A minus B is, is negative, like when, when, if you just look at these numbers, if your first number is smaller, that's when you're going to get that inner loop. And you use the pole and um, A minus B to know where to put it. When A and B are the same, or when A minus B is zero, same thing, that's when there's no inner loop and it's not pushed out at all. It's just using the pole here and it's a heart shape. And when A and B, when A is greater than B like this, or when A minus B is greater than zero, that's when it gets pushed out away from the pole and there's no inner loop or anything. Okay, now roses. Roses are tricky too, because you have to look at this number. And you have to decide if it's even or odd. And the amount of petals you draw on your rows depends on that. 
So if it's an even number, you double it. So like this one's gonna have four petals. If it's an odd number, that's the number, five petals. So like this next one has four petals. This next one would have three petals. Now, the number in front tells you the distance that each of those petals goes out from the pole. And then the cosine or sine just tells you like where to start that rose. So here's what I mean. I have a positive cosine function that has got to have four petals. Well, since it's positive cosine, here's where my first petal starts. I should do it a different color, hold on. Since it's positive cosine, here's where my first petal starts. Now I need three other petals and they all have to be equidistant apart like this. That would be the rows. Now the first number, that three, that just tells you that these things go three out away from the pole. So that would be my answer for that graph. Now, if it's an odd petal, this one's still a cosine function. So the fact that it's still cosine tells me my first petal's here. Um, now, I would be like, okay, it has to have five petals. So if you think about it, like if you do, you could do the math and, and get like the degrees to make it perfect, but I kind of just wing it and go like, okay, one, two, three, there's my other four petals. And it doesn't have to be the Mona Lisa. Um, it just has to be somewhat correct in terms of the distance away and where you started your first petal. Okay, let's keep, keep going. All right, now, cosine's kind of the easy one. Um, cosine even or odd, it's going to start where that green first loop is. Sine, though, sine gets kind of weird. So here's what I mean. The rule for the petals stays the same. So even numbers, you double them. Odd numbers, that's what it is. Now, when it's an even sign... Um, let's do it in blue. Even sign. Even sign doesn't touch any of these quadrantals. It can't touch this where it's basically supposed to start. So what you do is you fill the gaps. Like that. That's for even sign. Odd sign. When I say even odd, I'm referring to the amount of petals. Odd sign can start there. And then you'd be like, okay, I need two other petals. So one, two, like that. And then in terms of that first number that stays the same, it's just telling you, okay, this distance would have to be four away. This distance would have to be four away, like that. I hope that wasn't too confusing. So, quick recap. Odd number here, that's how many petals. Even number here, you double it, then that's how many petals. Cosine's easy, because you always start right there where that green circle is. Sine's not easy though, sine's confusing. If it's a even sign, like four petals, six petals, eight petals, you have to fill the gaps. You cannot start where you're supposed to. If it's an odd sign, three petals, five petals, seven petals, you're allowed to start there just like normal. So there you have it. There's circles, lemasons, and roses. Um, hope this video helped.